Hey guys, this tutorial concerns the homework that I'm giving you on Thursday that will be due on Monday concerning simplifying fractions or just really some fractional sense. Um, you know, at the top of the page I do want you to notice a few things, and this will be a really quick tutorial, but I've given an example of the type of things that you'll see at the top of your paper, and it's asking questions of like how many small parts are in a lot of holes or a specific amount of holes. Uh, W-H-O-L-E, not holes in the ground, but I say how many thirds are in one or, or in five holes? The major question here is this, how many thirds are in one hole? So what we can do is we can actually draw a diagram of this and if I were to split it into thirds, I'd say how many thirds are in one hole? Well, of course the answer is three thirds and one easy way to illustrate this is, well, three thirds, what does that come out to be? Well, it simplifies down to one. So we say, okay, hold on. If there are three thirds and one hole, and actually I can write that as a ratio, three thirds, that's kind of ironic, to one whole, I want to know how many thirds in five holes. Okay, so here's the deal. I mean, if there are three for every one and I have five of those things, we could just say, well, it's real simple. You take three times five, you get 15. But illustrating this, you might notice that there's a scale factor. You might say, okay, well, one times three is three. Well, five times three then would be this hidden mystery number, which is 15. Or, you know what, if you notice there was a scale factor from one to five is times five, we take three times five. Either way, you're going to get the same product here, which is 15 thirds. <coughs> so this is the approach you'll use on the first set of problems. Uh, the next set are going to be a bunch of proper fractions, as a matter of fact. They can be simplified. What you're going to want to look for here is a greatest common factor between the numerator and the denominator. Uh, remember, there's the holy trinity, we say, of questions when it comes to simplifying fractions, starting with are the num and denom both even? The second question is, do they both end in 0 or 5 at the same time, simultaneously? Or is one of these prime? Because if it's prime, it, we need to check to see if it goes into the other one. And if it doesn't, then we're simply done. Okay, uh, I noticed, first of all, on this one here, that these were both even. Okay, so first thing I might try to do, and especially if they're larger numbers, is just split them in half. Half of four, 8 is 4. Half of 48 is 24. Of course, these are still both even. Uh, and we're going to talk about what this would mean actually in a second, but I say half of 4 is 2, half of 24 is 12, and as a matter of fact, let's keep going here. 2 goes into both of these. I know this because they're even. This would reduce down to 1, which is half of 2, and 6, which is half of 12. In other words, the original fraction, which is 8 48 is equivalent to 1 6. We can prove this by showing that they're equal ratios or proportional because of the fact that there was a scale factor. We could take these both times 8 to yield this fraction here. So these are equal fractions. Now I do want you to notice this though. There was a greatest common factor between 8 and 48. So we say, well, what are the numbers that go into 8? Well, 1, 2, 4, and 8. What are the numbers that go into 48? I'd say 1, 2, as a matter of fact, 3 goes in, 4, 4 goes in, 6 goes in, 8 goes in, you know all these numbers, 12, 16 as a matter of fact, wow, and, and 48, but the biggest one that they have in common is actually 8 itself. We could have divided these both by 8 to begin, to begin with. We would have skipped going through these two fractions straight to go to collect our $200, and, and so our large ambition is a lot of the time looking for a greatest common factor. Hey, looking at this fraction, I do want to point this out. They're not both even. They don't both end in 0 or 5 simultaneously. But guess what? 11 is prime. All of a sudden, I'm suspicious, especially if somebody's asking me to simplify this. Like, oh, hey, can you simplify this for me? And first thing I say, well, 11 is prime. So here's what I'm going to check. Does 11 go into 132? Now, you may suspect that it does. We can check this. I say 132 divided by 11. And I know 11 goes into 1 0 times, but into 13 once. Once taking away that 11, we say 2 and 2. And isn't this nice? We say it goes in 12 times. So we can divide both of these by 11. Of course, this will be 1. This will turn into that 12 that we just yielded in this quotient. But we say this simplified fraction is 1 12. One really sweet thing about finding a fraction where one of those numbers is prime and it actually goes into both of those is the fact that when you divide the prime number by itself, that turns into a unit or 1. So either the top or bottom is prime. It doesn't matter. If it is a common factor, it's going to be switching down to a 1. So kind of cool. And then the last part of your worksheet should give you a bunch of improper fractions. And by improper, I mean that the numerator is actually greater than the denominator, which represents something bigger than one whole. So I look at this and I say, okay, 33 over 9, I guess here's the deal. You know, we talk about percentages a lot of the time. Uh, and we talk about to find a percentage with a fraction, you take the numerator divided by the denominator. 
okay, um, oh, you know, that's what a fraction is kind of asking us to do. Take this, divide it by this. Now, I know that 9 doesn't go into this perfectly. 9 would go into 36 perfectly, and, and that would do that four times. Since this is 33, which is less than 36, I would say this is going to go in about three times. But here's what I want to know. How many times does 9 go into this evenly? Now, you notice they asked us to write it as a mixed number. Several of you are going to have this sudden urge to want to divide 33 by 9. And as a matter of fact, I have a lot of confidence in you. You're going to do it awesome, and you're going to get a decimal. They've asked you for a mixed number. As a matter of fact, finding a mixed number is a lot easier. We'll show you here why that's true. 9 goes into 33 a total of 3 whole times. So we're going to call this the whole part of our whole number. Sorry, no pun intended, but I say 9 went in to 33 3 whole times, and I want to know how many of those nights are left over. So the next cool part is this denominator doesn't change. The last part is this. I'm going to ask this question, how many were left over? Well, what is 3 times 9? It was 27. Okay, well, 27 taken off of this 33, 33 minus the 27, and you do have to borrow, big whoop, we say 13 minus 7 is 6, okay, 0. So we would call this actually the remainder of our division problem, and I say, oh, well, check this out. 6 of those 9 were left over, and even more, kind of working off of what we had done up here, this is a proper fraction, but what do you notice about 6 and 9? Well, they have a common factor. That common factor is 3. So if you would leave it like this on your DMCT, I'd have to say, you're awesome. You know how to do this. This is correct, but i got to count you wrong because this wasn't the simplest form. So I say, okay, well, 3 goes into 6 twice and 3 goes into 9. Sorry to be geeky here, thrice. So I say, this comes out to be 3 and 2 thirds. Kind of use this video as a, as a little refresher course on how you do this worksheet. Good luck, guys.